Good day everyone and welcome to our experiment for today. In this experiment, we will be showing you a demonstration of the vinegar analysis setup. We will be teaching you about titration and I will be teaching you about the calculations involved in titration. But before that, let's first go through some background. We all know that vinegar is an indispensable condiment in every Filipino household. So when you enter any house in the Philippines, you see that they have several condiments and vinegar is definitely one of them. Now, what makes vinegar sour is its component called acetic acid. The structure of acetic acid is given here and it's sour because it's an acid and acids generally produce a pH below 7 when they are dissolved in water. So how do we plan to determine the percent by mass of acetic acid in a vinegar sample? We will be determining it through the process called titration. Titration is the process of slowly adding titrants to an analyte until we reach an endpoint. So let's first define some of these terms. The titrant is the solution of known concentration. The titrant is very important because without it, you cannot determine the concentration of your unknown solution. The analyte contains the substance of unknown concentration. In this case, it's our vinegar sample because we don't know yet what's the percentage by mass of acetic acid in our vinegar. That's why the vinegar is our analyte. And the endpoint of the titration is the visual cue that the titration is complete. I will be discussing more of the endpoints later. But let's first uh, draw a diagram for the experiment. So in this experiment, you have a titration setup. Let's say, for example, that your analyte is contained in a flask. And our analyte is our vinegar sample. In that analyte, we will be slowly adding our titrant. Our titrant in this case is a sodium hydroxide solution. The main reaction involved in this case is the acid-base reaction between the acetic acid and the sodium hydroxide in your titrant. So the acetic acid with formula CH3COOH reacts with sodium hydroxide, which is in your titrant, to produce sodium acetate and water. So again, the acetic acid is in your analyte. The sodium hydroxide is your titrant. So we have a titrant solution of known sodium hydroxide concentration. Let's write the concentration of your sodium hydroxide solution is known. And by the process of titration, we are adding your titrant dropwise until we see a visible color change, which signals the endpoint of the titration. And when we reach that endpoint, we will know how much volume of the titrant have we used for the reaction. So we know the concentration of sodium hydroxide. We will also know the volume of the sodium hydroxide solution that was used to neutralize your analyte. And that is the point of titration. No, for you to know how much titrant is used to neutralize your analyte. So if we know the concentration of sodium hydroxide and the volume used in neutralizing our analyte, then we can use those two values to determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that was used in the reaction. If you will remember the definition of molarity, so molarity is defined as the moles of solute over the volume of the solution in liters. So if you're given the concentration of your titrant in molar, no, we can use that molarity to determine the number of moles of our sodium hydroxide. By cross-multiplying this equation, we get that the moles of sodium hydroxide, which is our solute in this case, would simply be equal to the concentration of sodium hydroxide in molar multiplied by the volume of the sodium hydroxide solution used in the titration. And then, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide can be related to the number of moles of acetic acid present in the solution through stoichiometry. 
because if you take a look at our balance equation, sodium hydroxide and acetic acid exist in a ratio of 1 is to 1, meaning that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide would also be equal to the number of moles of acetic acid in our vinegar sample. And when you know how much acetic acid is in your sample, you can convert the number of moles to mass, and then you can get the percentage by mass of acetic acid in your vinegar sample. So this is your entire calculations for this experiment. You just need to know the volume of the titrant used. You also need to know its concentration, and we can relate that to the number of moles of acetic acid in our analyte solution. Okay? So let's proceed. Your objective in this experiment is to determine the percent by mass of acetic acid in vinegar. And uploaded in your Blackboard accounts are your raw data. You are already given the values for the volume of the titrants and the concentration of the titrants. And you are tasked to determine the percentage by mass of acetic acid in your vinegar samples. You should perform all of your calculations and show all of your solutions and use those values to prepare your data sheet and your final reports to be uploaded today. And with that, we are ready to watch the demonstration of the titration. I will be providing commentary along the way. This is the video demonstration for the titration of vinegar. First, she is obtaining a known volume of your vinegar sample using a pipette. The exact volume of your vinegar sample is reflected in the raw data provided to you in your Blackboard accounts. She is then transferring the known volume of the vinegar sample to an empty Erlenmeyer flask. Now, we are assuming here that the density of vinegar is 1 gram per ml, such that if she obtained 5 milliliters of the vinegar solution, that also translates to 5 grams of the vinegar solution. That will be important later in your calculation of percent by mass of acetic acid in the sample. So next, she is obtaining some distilled water. The purpose of the distilled water here is to dilute your vinegar solution and so that we can have a clearer view of the end point of the titration because it's very difficult for you to it's very difficult for you to track the changing of the color if you have a very tiny amount of the sample. Now, the dilution of the water here does not affect the amount of acetic acid in your sample because remember, you know the amount of vinegar that was added to your Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, So the water here is just to dilute your solution. Notice that she is also washing the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask just in case that you have some droplets of vinegar that adhere to the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask. That is to ensure that when you titrate later, that you get or that you react all of the acetic acid in your sample. So let's wait for her to finish adding the required amount of distilled water to the Erlenmeyer flask. Now comes a very important part of your titration. She is adding a few drops of the phenotalin indicator to your Erlenmeyer flask. Now let me pause at this point. At this point, you now have three components in your Erlenmeyer flask, your vinegar sample, distilled water, and the phenotalin indicator. The purpose of the phenotalin indicator is it tells you when the titration is over. Now, phenotalin has two colors. If it is under acidic conditions, phenotalin is colorless. And if it is under basic conditions, it is bright pink. In your Erlenmeyer flask, you only have distilled water and acetic acid, which is an acid. That means that phenotalin still is colorless. But as we add some of your titrants, remember your titrant is sodium hydroxide, which is a base, then it would start changing its color to pink. Okay? It would only appear pink if there is a very, very tiny excess of sodium hydroxide from the titration. So when your solution already appears bright pink, that means that it's over titrated because you have added too much of the base to your analyte. Okay? Now for our titration to be perfect, you are aiming for a light pink color on the Erlenmeyer flask. That means that we only added 
a very, very tiny amount of sodium hydroxide in excess of what was required to react with the acetic acid to have the change in color of your mixture. Without indicators, this titration would not be possible. So notice here that she is slowly adding drops of your titrant to your analytes. Your titrant is placed in the burette. The burette contains the sodium hydroxide solution of known concentration. And in your Erlenmeyer flask is your analyte. Now, you will see later that as she adds more drops of your titrant, you would see a change in color on your flask. Let's fast forward through the titration. Okay, I want you to look carefully at the Erlenmeyer flask. As she adds a drop of the titrant, the solution turns pink, but as she stirs that solution, the color disappears. That's because your sodium hydroxide that's being added to the solution reacts with the acetic acid. So the swirling of the flask is very important because it allows us to react the sodium hydroxide with the acetic acid. It also ensures that you are not adding too much of your titrant. So you can see that the pink color is starting to appear in the solution but disappears. So we want the pink color to persist in order for us to tell that the titration is over. So this titration is very, very near its endpoint. Okay, this is the end point of the titration. You see here now that the solution is a very, very light pink color and it's persisting, meaning it's no longer disappearing. So this tells us that the phenothalene is already reacting with the slight excess of sodium hydroxide in your Erlenmeyer flask. So the contents of your flask are now slightly basic. That's why you can see a change in color from the phenothalene. So let's see if it will persist. Okay, so it's persisting, and that is the end of our titration. Okay, now at this point, you would be able to read the final volume of your titrants from your burette. Through that, we can determine the total volume of sodium hydroxide that was used in the titration, and that would be used in our computations later. That's the end of the demonstration. What we want you now to do is to visit the raw data provided to you, prepare your data sheet, and prepare your final report for submission. Thank you.